Well, creator, the behavior of the collective youth definitely seems to be in favor of the Western man's invasion. I'm Cynthia Whitcomb, and this is... Mark Aceto. I am the co-author of Holidays, which I wrote with... C.S. Whitcomb. So, yeah, we're supposed to talk about Holidays. Uh, it's our... a delightful, adorable comedy. Comedy. Heartwarming, quirky comedy. We both write, in, in your work as a TV writer, my work as a novelist, this theme about family, making a family. And that yeah. we both we were able to find that together as a as a theme that we could write about. Yeah, uh, it actually started more you thinking it was about how frustrating and ridiculous the holidays have become, and it ended up really being a play about um, families being inclusive of other people, of friends, of homeless kids. So that hi, Larry. <laughs> Larry Colton, walking by, founder of Wordstock. It's, it's a little strange <laughs> as we record this with people like yeah. having appearances and things like that. Yes. Uh, so yes, yeah, so it was a it was a theme that we both really care about. Yeah. It's like a hot spot, I think, for both of us. Uh, I find that no matter how much I try to write other things, I tend to keep writing the same thing over well, and over. It, 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 it sort of lurks there underneath. I don't know if that's it. true now that I've said that. I, I take that back. Well, your books I'm, are definitely about that. Yeah, about certainly. friends becoming your family. Right. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's important to me. It's, uh, and that, that kind of, I think, dovetails really nicely to talking about the community of writers in Portland and how supportive they are, uh, particularly with, of course, in ourselves, our big brain trust, and how we have this amazing group of yeah. brains together that we can do this uh, ex yeah. Vulcan mind meld that we do. Yeah. But in your experience as president of Willamette Writers, you've, what's your experience been of the writing community? It's an incredible, when I moved to Portland, I was amazed how there was a writing community because I'd only lived in places where there wasn't one. California, I grew up in California where really there wasn't. There were writers, but they were all isolated. It wasn't like there was a group, I don't know, spirit. Here, there's like. Is that, you think, because of the geography of Los Angeles and everyone's in their cars? And so. I don't know what it is, but this is just a very bookish community. Maybe it's because of the rain, but you've got great bookstores, great readers, great reading groups. I mean, I never. There are book clubs here? I never heard of book clubs before. I thought book clubs was like book of the month. Here everybody's got book clubs where they're reading great books and they're reading and talking about books. Mm -hmm. It's very different in its tone. Do you find coming from the East Coast, the writing community here, how was that for you? I don't know because I came here right out of college, so I have nothing to compare it to. You know, this was like so many kids who graduate from school and go, oh, I want to go to that cool lifestyle place. That's how I chose to chose Portland. It was the same thing. I mean, so I'm like so many people who have come since then, the 20 years since I came here. Uh, so it didn't occur to me. But I was out of the community for a long time. For starters, being an opera singer, I was on the road a lot. For the first seven years that I lived in Portland, I was gone for three and a half of them at a month at a time. So I wasn't really grounded here. Yeah. Definitely plug your opera because a lot of people that see this won't know you're in an opera coming up this fall and they would come to it if they knew you're in it. It's true. I, it's it's, it's bizarre. It's this it. weird bit of serendipity. I'm When I, I had given up opera now, you know, over 10 years ago and I, when I sold How I Paid for College, uh, I got a call from the opera saying, would I be the emperor in Turandot? Would you be the emperor of China? Would I be the emperor of China <laughs> of, in Turandot? In and I, uh, <laughs> And so I did this gig just sort of as a lark, as, as you recall, because I remember you came. You had fingernails and, this long and a mustache this long. Yeah, exactly. And I couldn't, and, and there were the headdress, yeah. too. I looked you had to like, walk around like this. Well, yeah, I couldn't open doors for myself. I really learned what it was like to be one of those Chinese royalty, because I could not wipe my own ass. I mean, so I just didn't go to the bathroom, just so you know. It's not like I had someone wipe my ass for me. But oh, I, right. I had that huge headdress, too. I looked like that dog in The Grinch Who Stole Christmas, where they right. put the, the things antlers. on his head to look. Yeah. I would come around corners, and I would bang at the door and that kind of thing. And I just thought, oh, that'll be great. That'll be a lark. I'll it was never... your follies. Your follies, yeah. girl. <laughs> Big Phil's follies, girl moment. Right, so I thought, I'll never do another opera again. And lo and behold, six years later, they asked me to do Philip Glass's Orfei. I play the, the glazier in the underworld. I'm the person who greets Orpheus in the underworld. You're, you're the author's title character. You're the glazier. I'm Philip the glazier in Philip Glass. <laughs> That's yeah. right. Yeah. Uh, and Philip Glass is coming to work with us on it. Oh my God. Yeah, it's it's so cool. It's incredible. It's, yeah, it's a very cool Portland. And the, honestly, I think they hired me because I'm a writer. 
I think they wanted me in it because they liked the the publicity and the extra. Well, that's interesting. Sort of, now tell people what's what are the dates? I don't. Is it the Keller Auditorium? In November, right? And in this November. videotape might be running after then, so we probably don't need to be plugging that. But it's. Uh, oh, we don't know. We don't, we don't know, know when this 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 videotape could probably oh, okay. be on the internet for the rest this of all time. But okay. If you're watching right. this and it's 2009, you could still get there. Uh, <laughs> It's 2009, you can still get there. Yeah. I am going to plug my thing, which is I'm taking a group of writers to Europe on a transatlantic cruise. Which you have done before. Which I've done before, and it was a smashing success. Everybody loved it so much that we're doing it again April 10th to the 24th, two weeks. Miami to Rome by way of Barcelona and south of France. The thing that's so cool about that is that you were at sea. Yeah. So you had these days just we at sea. We have nine days at sea for everybody to write, yeah. People got 70 pages a piece written on the average last time. Now, why do you think it was so productive? Well, I didn't allow anyone to speak all afternoon, no talking. So we had a three-hour class in the morning where I got them all worked up. Then we had lunch, and then no one was allowed to talk all afternoon. So they all went back to the boardroom and plugged in their computers and couldn't speak for three hours. From two to five, no talking. Wow. And then they just wrote their asses off because everyone else in the room was typing. Everyone just ended up writing. The energy just combined. I heard this the other day. Energy group every night. I heard, the, I heard this the other day that actually what motivates people to do things is because other people are doing it. That's the yeah. primary thing that motivates us. Yeah. And so the idea, but that's very actually very similar to the Writer's Dojo, actually. The Writer's Dojo has this environment where people can be there, and it motivates you because other people are doing it. Okay, they definitely won't cut that out. That's no, be the that'll be, the they're going to love that. It's, uh, but I think it's the same thing with the Brain Trust. You know, it's being around other great writers makes me want to be a better writer. Yeah. You know, and, and seeing and hearing other writers do great stuff makes me say, oh God, I roll up my sleeves and say, I yeah. want to make that happen and I want to do that. It's also what happens when we go away together, like uh, to the Oregon Writers Colony House at the beach or to Sylvie Beach Hotel when mm -hmm. the BBT went down there. It right. was great. We got a lot of work done. We're, you know, working together is great for motivation for writers. Yeah. Love it. Well, again, you're an extroverted writer, as am I. So we yes, get we energy to from to, from other people That's and uh, the, the the banter that comes from from writing, uh, and which worked really well for us collaborating because we would just sat in the room and cracked each other up all the time. And just talk, talk the way Although I'll tell you another thing, I didn't realize at the time when we were writing it, but this idea that you have about how you cannot manufacture a play. That a play is, no one knows what makes a play work. It's just something that just has to happen organically. Yes. And that was terrifying to me, to not have an outline, that we just started page one, act one, scene one, and Spells went. Our way through it, yeah. Yeah, I was so uncomfortable for that first draft in that first month, just feeling our way along the dark wall and doing that. Uh, but it but turned out really well. It turned out really well, yes. and uh, now people are laughing 180 times in yeah. 90 minutes, and they're crying with their whole hands, and yeah. I'm, I'm feeling... Turned out really well. I'm really proud of it. It was a real heart gesture for us, and if you remember, it was being produced during last year during Arctic Blast 2008, and you'd have people traipsing through the snow to get to see the, the show, and they'd see the show where there's snow on stage and homeless people on stage, and then they'd step out into the snow and see the homeless people on Burnside. And it, it packs such a big punch, I think, for people to realize what we were really trying to say. So. I think so. I'm very, very happy about it, and I'm so happy that it'll be happening again this year, because toward the end last year, the last few performances, 40 and 50 people were being turned away at the door. Right. And I, because they just... You know, they got the feel that they just somehow through the grapevine knew that it was something they really, yeah. really wanted to see. And I'm totally psyched too because now we've got some new costumes, we've got some, a new set. It, it's everything's new just teams. been souped up. So, yeah, and what's more, a new lobby because ART yeah. has just uh, uh, remodeled. Yeah. We'll be the very first show in their brand new yeah. gorgeous lobby. So I'm totally psyched that we get to do that. Yeah, me too. Okay, I'll see you at the theater. Yep. You got it? Okay. <laughs>